Another important point is balancing caring for your mate's feelings without losing your voice. And I know this can be difficult, but it's essential to communicate your needs and your boundaries clearly. Remember, staying strong doesn't mean being stiff and rigid. It's about being adaptable and being empathetic while maintaining your self-respect. And for people pleasers, which I'm a recovering people pleaser, this can be a delicate dance. <laughs> Embracing sophisticated empowerment means recognizing that true strength lies in your ability to be both vulnerable and resilient. You have to do both. So here are the practical tips to transform your relationship with a unique spin that will inspire real change in you. And it's simple. The first one is to turn triggers into triumphs. Recognize your emotional triggers and use them. Use them as a catalyst for personal growth. Imagine each trigger as an opportunity to rewrite your response and turn potential conflicts into moments of connection. So instead of reacting in a way that will pull you further apart, you react in a way that's going to bring you closer together. Changing the power of your triggers helps to manage your emotions as well. Your emotions, they impact your thinking, and your thinking impacts your behavior, and your behavior impacts your environment, and in this case, your relationship. Number two, use self-awareness as a superpower. Embrace self-awareness as your personal, powerful, unique gift. You have to regularly check in with your emotions like you would a close friend. And then you would write down your feeling, do this every day, and this will help you understand the patterns that you have in your emotions, the things that set you off, and that way you can proactively address them. This transforms you from a trigger responder to an emotional planner. Number three, create a vision board for positive goals not just the material things that you want, but for positivity in relationships and include relationship-specific goals. You visualize a healthy, loving relationship. What does that look like? Does that look like spending more time together? Does that look like going on dates? Does that look like having a trip? Does that look like just watching television together or having dinner together? What does it look like? Put a picture of it. Get it. Put it together. And use this daily as a reminder to strive toward that vision. I mean, you have to see it in order to go after it. Number four, develop gratitude routines. So what you're going to do is incorporate gratitude activities in your daily routine. So after doing skincare, after working out, you are going to start with writing down three things that you're grateful for about your relationship. This activity can shift your focus from the challenges that you're facing to the blessings that you've experienced by this union or the blessings that you're going to have in the future. But you can look back and be grateful and know this relationship might be rocky right now, but it's not that bad. And those blessings that I've experienced in the past, I'll, I'm grateful for them and I want more of them. This doesn't have to be a big deal either. This can be very easy to do. All you have to do is get just a regular notebook and write down what you're grateful for every morning. Because acknowledging this early in the day gets your focus on the positives of your relationships so that you can think positively about your relationship all the day long. Number five, I call this the PPP, not that PPP. This PPP is the positive phone prompt. So what you're going to do is save a digital prompt on your phone that reminds you to stay positive. And not just generally, but very specific. You're going to get an image that shows you and your partner smiling or doing something that you love to do or something that was a happy time in your life or a scripture that relates to relationships and being positive. And you're going to save that in your notes. Or you can even pick a song and add that to your playlist, something that has sentimental value. Whenever you feel negativity creeping in, you're going to access this PPP and remind yourself of the commitment to positivity, your commitment to your relationship. And finally, number six, 
the self-talk switch. You're going to practice switching negative self-talk with the scriptures or if you use positive affirmations to change your mindset right then and there. You're going to create a list of scriptures or affirmations that resonate with you and recite them whenever you feel negativity arising. Like whenever I feel doubt or I feel fear, I have my go-to scriptures. The Lord did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and soundness of mind. And I say that two times, three times, five times, however long until my thinking changes. You can do the same thing for specific scriptures about your relationship. Wherever you have an issue, there's a scripture for it. But what this does is it builds your faith. It builds your emotional resilience and it develops a self-image for yourself. So what I'm going to tell you is you can use any of these tips and your relationship will improve. If you use all of them, oh my goodness, you are going to see yourself in a positive, great relationship with the partner that you desire. If you're ready to take control of your emotions and transform your relationships, get my book, Brains and Bobbles Do What Works For You. Read how vulnerability is the key to having the type of relationship you want. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more empowering content.